So this week, we'll make some Vietnamese baguettes, banh mi. Now baguettes in Vietnam were introduced by the French, but the Vietnamese people just took them to a whole other level. This is definitely my kind of baguette. There's like 13 different fillings inside this. It's fantastic. But obviously you can fill them with whatever you like. This recipe is for the bread. And as always, you'll find all the details down in the description box. Now, if you own one of these things, by all means, use it. But to make this more accessible, use a baking tray lined with a non-stick sheet. You can use paper as well. And then we'll need the usual suspects. A bowl, scale, scraper, a temperature probe, a rolling pin, a brush, and a razor blade or a serrated knife for scoring the dough. Now on to the ingredients. We'll need some strong white bread flour, some water, a bit of yeast, salt and sugar and a little special oil. Now my kitchen is quite warm, so my water to be around 19 degrees Celsius to keep the dough temperature low. This dough is made with a flying sponge, so that's a pre-ferment. We'll add all of the water, all of the yeast and a part of the flour. Now mix it together and we'll leave it to ferment. Using this pre-ferment will give the bread a nice flavour. It's very simple, you just mix everything together, cover it up and leave it to proof for 45 to 60 minutes. And it should bubble up quite a lot in that time. My kitchen is really warm today, so it only took me 45 minutes. And as you can see, it's full of air, super fluffy. And you will feel this as you run your scraper through it, but you don't want it to be runny. Now we can continue by adding the sugar and salt. And we'll add most of the oil. We just need to leave back a little splash. That's for later. Now give it a good mix, just to dissolve any large salt crystals and sugar crystals. And now add the rest of the flour and then give it a good mix in the bowl until you don't see any more dry flour. Once you're happy with that, tip it out on your table. This dough is not very sticky, so I'll use a regular kneading method. Using the heel of my right hand, I press down and forwards and using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand. Then I turn and repeat. This process will take around 5 to 7 minutes, no longer. And once you're happy with it, shape the dough into a ball and we'll place it into a bowl, take its temperature and leave it to proof. This time my dough came out a little bit too warm because my kitchen is quite hot and my hands are super warm as well. So I'm going to proof it for a little less time. We'll cover it and I'll leave it for 25 minutes. Because we use the flying sponge, this will make the dough ferment even more rapidly. So after the first 25 minutes, I'll give it a fold. Now if your dough temperature is lower, it will ferment it for longer. You need to be the judge of that. But to perform a fold, dust your dough with a little bit of flour and stretch it out and fold the edges over the middle going around in a circle until it reaches the point where you started and then flip the dough smooth side up again and tighten it against the table the folds will give us a better structure and also equalize the temperature of the dough now i'll cover it up and leave it to proof for another 25 minutes again yours may take 30 to 45 minutes to judge it it should double in size this recipe is for two baguettes, so I'm going to divide it in half. Dust the dough with flour, tip it out on the table again, and then using the scraper, just cut it in half. If you want to make more, just double or triple the amount of ingredients in the recipe. You can also use scales to weigh your dough pieces. I'm just eyeballing it because I'm only making two. Now we want to pre-shape the dough pieces into blunt cylinders, stretch them out, fold in the sides, and then fold over the top and the bottom. And that's it, you don't want them to be too tight. The main purpose here is to seal in the edge that you cut open and to kind of get them ready for the final shape. And now, cover them up, leave them to rest. I rest mine for 10 minutes, because they're fermenting quite rapidly. The main purpose of resting is to relax the gluten, make it easier to shape. Now come shaping time, dust your dough pieces with a little bit of flour. You want to prevent sticking. Now turn the piece of dough smooth side down. And then grab your rolling pin, make sure everything's nice and floured, but you don't want to use too much flour here, and just roll them out thin. You want kind of a long rectangle shape basically, around twice the length of the original dough piece. Now we need to roll them tight, so starting from the top, roll it and tuck it, roll it and tuck it. You want to make it quite tight. 
obviously don't go too crazy. If you roll it too tight, you might tear the surface. And once you have reached the bottom, you can seal up the seams at the bottom and on the sides. It's quite simple, right? And if you mess it up, you got another piece of practice on. The main thing is to create layers and tension. Now place them on your tray or your baguette tray, whatever you're using, as long as it's non-stick. Cover them up and leave them for their final proof. I would suggest dusting them with flour a little bit and then wrapping them in cling film. You don't want them to stick. And the final proof should take them to almost double in size. So it took me around 25 minutes. Make sure to preheat your oven to 230C, no fan, and place a tray in the bottom of the oven. I'll show you why. And once the dough is puffed up nicely, when your oven's hot, what you need to do is brush the dough with water. This will help with the crispy crust. And once you're done with that, grab your razor blade or your serrated knife and cut them along the side. Now they're ready for the oven. Make sure to have a little cup of about 100 ml of water ready to go. Place your baguettes in the oven and splash the water in the tray in the bottom of the oven. This will create steam. Bake them for 20 minutes. The steam will help with getting a crispy crust. Make sure the bottom is baked. If not, flip them upside down and bake them for a couple of minutes. And as a final touch, get the rest of the oil and just brush it on in a thin coat. This will give the baguettes a nice sheen. This step is optional. You don't have to do it, but it is nice, right? And now, just leave them to cool down and they'll be ready to be enjoyed. But of course, it's only Vietnamese baguette if you fill it with Vietnamese ingredients, right? But the bread itself is really nice. Now to make this banh mi, I use some mayonnaise, some pate, some Maggi liquid seasoning, cured meats, fresh cucumber, pickled carrots and radish, fried egg, coriander, some hot sauce and a squeeze of lime juice to finish it off. Can there be too many ingredients in sandwich? I don't know, probably not. This was fantastic. The only thing missing here was some fresh chilies. But anyway, I've got some hot sauce. And yeah, you can fill these baguettes with whatever you like. It doesn't have to be Vietnamese. This bread will carry any filling really well. But as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, write them down in comments. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. I publish videos twice a week. On Wednesday, you get a recipe. On Sunday morning, you'll get some bread baking principles. So if you like baking and want to learn more about it, check them out. Because I'm on a mission to bake all the breads. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.